Hello, NG7M here with a video that discusses FTDI serial port settings. This video is specific to amateur radio operators that have transceivers that may detect RTS or uh, DTS signals on a serial port, whether it's internal to the radio or external, to do PTT keying or FSK keying, etc. The problem is, is that the FTDI serial port chipset, uh, by default, the settings when the Windows operating system boots up and potentially other operating systems, when it boots up it will cause those uh, lines to go high and if you have your transceiver on and an amplifier on you could potentially key the uh, radio at boot up time. Plus it's just annoying when you boot up um, you hear things click at startup. So um, this may be old news for a lot of you out there but um, you might want to listen towards the end. I'll actually be demoing a little utility I wrote. It's a, a .NET console application that automatically will enumerate through all of your FTDI serial ports and turn off uh, the appropriate options to keep those ports from keying at Windows boot up time. So uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, there's a, a lot of good documentation on this out there and Bob N6 TV, November 6, Tango Victor, has a nice document that gives you pretty much everything you want to know about serial ports as it relates to your amateur radio transceivers. So I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, the uh, real reason I made this video is I wanted to reference it in some additional videos that I'll be making. So let's jump right in. What I want to show you is um, was brought on by getting a new transceiver or adding any new USB to serial port that's an FTDI chipset to the computer that I use in the shack. And so in my case, I have a new transceiver. It's an LCraft K4, and when I plugged that in, it detected two new serial ports. And by default, those settings are going to be in a state that could potentially cause my transceiver to key up at boot time. And it's also applicable to the K4 and any other transceiver. This is very common, ICOM, Kenwood, whatever. You could potentially have this problem. But on the K4, you can now set the DTR lines and DTS lines to do a number of different things. Um, like I mentioned, PTT and um, RTS could key that, or DTR could do FSK or whatever. So there's a little more functionality on the K4 that makes this a little more applicable, and really the reason I created this. But hey, don't run away if you don't have an Aircraft radio. So the first thing I want to do is just show you the existing settings. Now you can do all this manually through the device manager and if you only have one or two serial ports it may not be a big deal. But in my case I have a lot of FTDI serial ports and it, it has become a problem. It's just a pain to go in there and do it every time there is an FTDI driver update or I add a new FTDI USB to serial port adapter to my computer. Um, so hence the utility that I'll demo in a second. So the first thing I'm going to do is just show you the manual way to do this. Um, I've got my sophisticated presentation software here, Microsoft Word, showing you what we're going to be talking about. And uh, I'll go ahead and minimize that. I'm going to pull up the uh, device manager, and you can do that through the system settings, etc. I'm running Windows 11, and on Windows 10, you can just use a hotkey. You just do Windows key X, and then hit M to pull up the device manager. I'm recording in 4K, so I'll need to zoom in so you make sure you, everybody can see what's going on here. So I'll zoom in a couple levels. And let's see here. Um, here we go. Get that zoomed in. And so right now, I've got it in a state as though I had just plugged in my new transceiver. And I have a number of serial ports, as you can see. A couple of them are from an ICOM radio, and a couple of them are from uh, some other devices that I have. These are actually Morty devices using a, a single board computer that has the knockoff CH340 chipset. So we're not interested in these entries right here. We're interested the entry in the entries in the middle. These are all of my FTDI serial ports. You can see I have quite a few of them. So the ports in question that are new are COM9 and COM19 in my case. So if I go to COM9, you're going to see that the port settings, if I go to advanced, you can see that this ser serial enumerator is checked. We don't want this. And the disable modem control at startup is not checked. We want to check that. So um, I'll just quickly show you on COM19. Right click, go to properties, 
um, the same settings are at their defaults. Serial numerator is checked. Disable mode of control is not checked. Now, if you look at my other serial ports, they've already been updated. So if I go to COM2, Properties, Port Settings, Advanced, you can see that Serial Enumerator is unchecked and Disable Mode of Control is checked. That, those are the correct settings to avoid any activity on the DTR and RTS lines at boot, Windows boot time. So I could manually change COM9 and COM19. No, not a problem, right? And if, that's what everybody is doing these days. But I wrote a little utility that's going to automatically do that for me and will double check to make sure any of my FTDI serial ports have the proper settings. So I'm going to close this, we'll zoom out, and I'll demo that little utility and wrap this video up. So this little utility I wrote is a .NET console application and it does require um, administrator privileges to update the registry. And when you download this little utility, I, I'll put a link to a zip file if you'd like to try this out. I've had a number of guys try it out. They haven't had any problems. But the uh, executable is not digitally signed. And you might also have Windows Defender complain a little bit when you download the zip file. So you'll just unzip the contents of the zip file to a directory of your choice. And then you run the executable that's in that directory. There's also an, a readme file that's pretty verbose that goes through and describes exactly what I'm doing um, as far as the little utility is concerned. So I have a shortcut on my desktop and I'm going to double click on that now. And Windows, you won't see this, but Windows is going to pop up a warning that says, hey, um, this is an unknown publisher. I have not digitally signed this executable and I won't. I'm not going to pay $100 a year for a digital certificate for a simple little amateur radio related utility. So you'll want to say yes on that dialogue if you want to go ahead and accept the risk there. And it will pull up a Windows console and we can make this a little bigger if we want. And I'm going to zoom in again. And I give a little description of what's going on here. And so what will happen here is the code will enumerate through all of my FTDI serial ports and it will detect that COM19 and COM9 need to have uh, registry changes. And it will then make those registry changes. So if you click yes and no changes that are detected, you'll get a message that says no changes uh, required. Otherwise, it'll show you the changes that are made. I'm going to go ahead and click Y for yes. And it always moves the screen around there. Let me scroll that back into view, that over. So here you can see that it detected that enumerator on COM9 need to be disabled. And it also needed to disable the modem control startup on COM9. So this, this first setting unchecks that first checkbox, and then it checks the other checkbox. And then the same changes needed to be made on COM19. And um, because of changes were made to the registry, I just throw out a little message that says you may need to rebuke, re reboot for those changes to take effect. And then you should, when you reboot, when you do reboot, you shouldn't hear, see any um, uh, anything happen on your transceiver if that was previously happening. I'll go ahead and click any key to exit and go ahead and unzoom. And then we'll quickly go to the device manager and zoom in again and just demonstrate that those registry settings were changed. Go to the COM ports. If I now go to COM9, right click, go to properties, port settings, advanced, you'll now see that the serial enumerator is unchecked and the disable mode of control at startup is checked. And we can double check on COM19, port settings, advanced, and those changes have been set um, automatically by my utility. Now, if you only have one or two serial ports, not a big deal maybe, but if you have a lot of serial ports like I have, I really find that utility helpful, and I, I think other guys will find it useful. And so again, I'll put a link to the zip file in the description of the video. And we'll go ahead and close this down, pull up my little presentation <laughs> window document there. And again, um, it's really nice to just know that all those settings are adjusted. Now keep in mind, the problem, everybody wants to blame Windows every time it does a Windows update, in the event that it updates the FTDI drivers, those settings will go back to default. And it's not Windows update that's the problem. It's the way that FTDI has implemented their driver and the configuration settings. So in the event there is a new driver and 
Windows Update updates the driver, those settings are changed back to default. And I suspect that's something that FTDI controls. They just want all your settings to go back to default. Maybe they have a good reason to do that, but for us amateur radio operators with transceivers and station automation, it's really annoying. So hence the NG7M FTDI serial port settings utility. Take a look at the comment or the uh, description. Uh, make objective comments. If you have any questions, send me an email. And uh, again, take a look at N6TV uh, Bob's link that I have in the description too if you want to learn more about uh, serial ports as they relate to your amateur radio transceivers. A lot of excellent information there provided by Bob. Uh, thanks for watching. Give me the thumb up, thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to get notified in the event I post uh, another video. Plus it makes the YouTube search algorithm better if you subscribe and give me the thumbs up. 73, hope to hear you on the air doing some operating and um, we'll see you next time. This is Max, NG7M.